All right, we're now ready for actually working through the solution, the, the homogeneous and ultimately the complete response for an underdamped series RLC. That is the case where alpha is less than omega n. So let's write the roots again here. We have S1, S2 are equal to minus alpha plus or minus square root of alpha squared minus omega n squared. Now for the case where alpha is less than omega n, I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to rewrite it as minus alpha plus or minus square root of minus 1 times omega n squared minus alpha squared. And then I'm going to replace, of course we'll pull out the j, and then I'm going to replace the remaining radical here, omega n squared minus alpha squared. I'm going to replace that with one more symbol. I'll call it omega d, where we define omega d as the square root of omega n squared minus alpha squared. D stands for dampened. Now this just makes it simpler. Uh, it's not as cluttered of an expression. All right, and we're ready to use this now. So recall that we can write our complete solution, or a homogeneous solution, I'm sorry, as um, A e to the S1t plus B e to the S2t. All right. That is our homogeneous solution. Now we're going to plug in our values for S1 and S2. So we'll have minus alpha minus j omega d times t plus b e to the minus alpha plus j omega d t. And we see that we have a common term here. So I'm going to write this a little bit differently. We'll pull out the e to the minus alpha t times e to the j omega dt plus b e to the minus alpha t. So we have these two in common. That's what we're going to uh, factor out here in a moment. And I can rewrite this now as a e to the j omega dt plus b e to the minus j omega dt. And the whole thing is multiplied by e to the minus alpha t. And we notice that this right here is the same as the LC, i.e. r equals zero case, except we have omega d, I'm sorry, omega d instead of omega n. Okay, but this is this is the term that we found that eventually was a sine wave or a cosine wave depending on uh, the initial conditions. And then this term here, we find that that is actually the exponential term that we had uh, predicted we'd see uh, when we would add a resistance. So, in fact, the math is turning out to uh, corroborate what we had uh, postulated. All right, so now we're ready for our complete solution. This is, again, for the underdamped case. So we'll have Vc of t is equal to Vs plus a e to the j omega dt plus b e to the minus j omega dt, the whole thing, times e to the minus alpha t. Now recall that when we originally solved uh, for the LC response, we also were using this expression a e to the j omega nt plus b e to the minus j omega nt. And when we plugged in and solved for the initial conditions, blah, 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 eventually the two complex exponentials collapsed or combined together to produce purely a cosine wave or purely a sine wave. And in fact, we went through solving the for the complete solution a second time where we replaced uh, the two complex exponentials with two weighted or a weighted cosine and a weighted sine term. And that's what I would like to do at this point. We don't want to use the complex forms. You can. It's just, it's just messier. So let's use the trig form. In other words, Vc of t is equal to Vs plus uh, c cosine omega d t plus d sine omega dt, and the whole thing is going to be times e to the minus alpha t. Now we ran into problems with my constant c before because it's I use it for the capacitor, so let's turn it to k. We'll use k times cosine omega dt. So that's what we're going to use for our complete solution. So let's consider the initial conditions. The first ones that we'd considered before it was the capacitor voltage is zero and the current IL is zero at time zero. So let's evaluate VC 
of t at time 0 will get vs plus k times 1 plus d times 0, the whole thing times 1. And all of this is equal to 0, which means that k is equal to minus vs. We now have to consider IL at time 0. That's equal to 0. Remember, we'd written that previously as uh, C D V D T. So we're going to take the derivative of our solution at time 0. I'm going to go to a new page because this is going to be a little messy. All right, IL of 0 is equal to C D V C D T at, e at time 0. So we'll have C times the derivative of what? Vs plus k cosine omega dt plus d sine omega dt and the whole thing whoops, oops, hold on, e to the minus alpha t and then close the whole thing up. So let's evaluate the derivative here. We'll have c times 0 plus the derivative of cosine is going to be minus omega d times k sine of 0 uh, plus omega d times d times cosine of 0. All of that times e to the 0. And then now we have to evaluate k cosine omega or k cosine 0 plus d sine 0 times the derivative of e to the minus alpha t. So I have minus alpha here times e to the 0. Just grinding some math there. So we have 0 plus, what do we have in here? This is 0, this is 1. This is 1. So it's plus omega d times d plus, this is 1, this is 0, this is 1. So we have plus k times minus alpha. And this whole thing is equal to 0. I can now solve for uh, d. So we therefore have d is equal to k alpha over omega d. And we had previously that k was equal to minus vs. So we have minus vs times alpha over omega d. And omega d, recall, is square root defined as square root of omega n squared minus alpha squared. So I'm going to write d in this form, minus vs times alpha over the square root of omega n squared minus alpha squared. Looks a little messy, but let's go ahead and, and write the solution. We have vc of t, so this is our final solution. vc of t is equal to vs times 1 minus, and then we'll have cosine omega dt plus alpha over square root of al omega n squared minus alpha squared times sine omega dt and the whole thing times e to the minus alpha t. So we have a couple different parts here. We have Vs, which is this part, the particular solution. We have uh, this piece here which is going to look like like this, right, once we put the minus in front of it and uh, multiply it by the e to the minus alpha t. And then we have this other term, which starts off at 0. And let, let's think about this, this scaling term here. If alpha is small, if alpha goes to 0, then this term goes to 0. And that's good because that's uh, we don't we didn't find that term to be present when we solved for purely the LC circuit response and we had no R, so that's good. If if R or if alpha gets bigger, the numerator gets larger and the denominator gets smaller. So this whole thing is going to grow. We're going to have an exponential decay just like before, but it starts at it's a sine wave. So, and then there's a minus sign too, so we'll, it'll end up being like this, all right? So how does that affect things? Uh, when you add these two together, 
uh, you know, adding a sine and a cosine basically shifts. Uh, you, you have the same sinusoid, uh, same frequency, the same decay, but it shifts it in time by some phase. So if you add uh, some sine term, uh, you will actually move uh, the net sinusoid, but it will still be a sinusoid nonetheless. So let's just go ahead and plot this at least qualitatively. So we'll have this exponential decay. It does start at zero, and um, it'll look like this. Okay, V, C, of T. So congratulations, we've you've ground through the math for the underdamped series RLC response. Note that this is valid for alpha less than omega n. Now let's let's write this in terms of uh, circuit component value. So we have R, L, and C. Let's see uh, what that implies for our R, L, and C value. So alpha, remember, is one half R over L. Omega N is one over square root of L, C. So let's solve for R. R is less than two L over square root of L, C which is 2 square root of L over C. Let's define yet another term. Define what we call Z naught, which is the characteristic, characteristic impedance. Z naught is defined as square root of L over C. Now you don't even know yet uh, about impedance. We haven't yet talked about it. Uh, so at this point, just recognize that this ratio, the square root of the ratio of inductance to capacitance, is a significant quantity that helps us determine, determine whether or not a system is underdamped or overdamped. And so uh, in the series RLC, the condition is that for underdamped, um, R is less than 2Z naught is for underdamped. And we can therefore conclude that overdamped will be when R is greater than 2 times the characteristic impedance, and critically damped will be when R is equal to 2 Z naught.